Hi, it's Nick Sadler of The Label Machine here. And on today's podcast, we have Heather Christie, the founder of Moon Babe Records, an artist-centric label with a focus on female music artists. Heather shared with us what mistakes new female artists make at the start of their career and what to do about it, how she gets her music onto Spotify playlists that she knows actually supports her label's music, and which pitching platforms she uses to get the best results for blog features and premieres for her label. I really enjoyed this. I hope you do too. You're listening to the Label Machine series, a podcast to inspire and help indie record labels and artists to build income streams for their music. I'm Nick Sadler, a music entrepreneur that has helped start and run multiple indie record labels. In this series, I'll be speaking with music industry leaders about their experience and the lessons they learn on how they both market and grow their music income. Welcome to the Label Machine series, where we discuss with our guests how artists and record labels monetize their music. Today's guest is Heather Christie. Heather is the founder of Moon Babe Records, an artist-centric label with a focus on female music artists and mothers, or as Moon Babe Records says, mamas. Heather also runs Mind Body Music, an education platform that covers everything from artist development to in-depth production courses aiming to uplift and inspire artists with a holistic music approach. Not only that, Heather is also an accomplished music artist in her own right, with over 3 million streams alone on her music on Spotify. Heather, how are you today? I'm great, Nick. Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) Awesome. So, um, first of all, I've been listening to you all afternoon on Spotify. Oh, I love Um, it. Yeah, I, I so I have a confession. I'm a massive trip hop fan, um, and I'm a, a big fan of Bonobo as well, which your music reminds me of. Um, I, in fact, I just ordered yesterday. I found an old there was a there's a a, a CD from Mixmag in 1998 called The Journey that had like um, Massive Attack. Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I forgot everybody else on there, but I I managed to track it down and buy it secondhand. Uh, which is oh. arriving soon, which I'm really stoked about. And uh, yeah, your like your favorite tracks for me were uh, "Open Me" and mm. uh, and the new track as well, the new release "Spaces Between" as well. So yeah, I'm I I'm like wow. And I got home earlier to uh, uh, see my wife and son, and um, and went uh, Alexa, uh, play Heather Christie, and straight away you came on. And oh, uh, and we're listening, and my wife's like, "Oh, this is pretty cool." And I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be uh, talking to her soon on the podcast." She's like, "What?" I was like, "I know. How good is her music?" Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. I love that so much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it was really Thank cool. You. So, anyway, I'm gonna stop gushing over you now, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm gonna open up with uh, first question. Ask everybody, which is, "How did you get started into the music industry, and what was your journey to get to where you are now?" Well, that's a pretty massive question that, you know, I could start at the age of three because that's when I started singing and wanting to be a performer. Um, But of course, I spent my whole childhood dreaming of being on Broadway. And so by the time I got to college, that was really when I started to shift things. And I, I realized that I wanted to learn music production because in the Broadway setting, someone else kind of had to do it for you. You have to audition and, you know, play the part. And I realized I wanted to create my own world, um, my own little rocket ship, as it were. So then I would say I've really been in the independent music game for, uh, let's see. I'm like, I haven't thought of this for a minute, but I guess it's like 11 years now. So, yeah. Um, a lot of, you know, things along the way that I learned. I was on American Idol for a second, randomly. I, I was a second what round. What did you do on American Idol? I was, what's that? What did you do on American Idol? I was a second round finalist in 2016. It was a very weird thing. Like, I, I wouldn't have thought to do it, but my best friend was like, oh, they're looking for real music artists this year. And, you know, so you should just, you should just go. And I was literally like in a place in my life where I was really between things. I was like, I don't know where I'm going. I think I'm moving to LA. And so I, I auditioned for the producers of the show directly, you know, and we, they like thought I was really interesting because I had like short hair and I was 
holding like a kombucha bottle. I was like this health girl or something to them. I don't know. But it really taught me what what not to do, like what I didn't want, essentially, which was, uh, you know, to, to have anything to do with being in that massive machine of the music industry. And I instead became like diehard, hardcore indie, you know, indiepreneur, musicpreneur. And I started like throwing myself at all the courses I could on music business and all of that. And so, yeah, I really dove deep. Um, and that was like 2017. And so since then, yeah, you know, I've just been doing it every day, every day, every day, doing the production, producing it, starting to produce for others, starting the record label, like all of it. It's just, I would say it's just my, uh, yeah, my life path at this point. So and uh, and so when did the when did you actually start the label so the label started i would say <laughs> the moment that i conceived my child um, <laughs> <laughs> no i you know sometime last year and yeah my baby is nine and a half months old now and so what it was for me um that kind of goes into the philosophy a little bit for me was oh my god i'm i'm about to become a mom or like right i'm wanting to become a mom and yeah, like all of these indie labels that I've signed with, they don't support me in the way that I would like to be supported by a label should I choose to sign. And I've done so many fully independent releases that I know the value of of like having someone who has your back and having a bigger umbrella. Um, but I didn't see the option that I wanted. So it was one of those situations where like, I got to go create it. Um so, so we've been a label for, yeah, about a, about a year was when I like announced it on yeah. Facebook. I'm starting a label like, yeah, probably uh, about a year ago. And I did not know how much um, feedback I was going to receive on it. Like people were like, yes, oh my God. So I was like, okay, I guess this is happening and we're doing this and people want this and this is a thing, you know? So, so pretty fresh. It's pretty new. <laughs> oh wow! I so I didn't I didn't realize it was that fresh. You know, I've 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 been on the website. I've seen some of the releases and stuff. Um, you've done an awful lot in a yeah. year. Um, yeah. but I guess like you said, you know, you've been doing the independent thing, and especially as an independent artist for a while. So, uh, it's not I guess like you're new to it. Um, mm -hmm. so you you know you talked about that there wasn't something out there for you and you understood having someone in your back. So I guess what, what made it your, what made it the focus for you um, running a label for women? And, um, and also like, is it, is it just, is it just woman only um, or, and, and also when you say it's for mamas as well, like, is it just for uh, artists that are mothers? Um, yeah. Can you kind of, kind of talk us through that? Of course, of course. So the intention was to create a space that was um, for for women artists, like or females who are fronted, you know, and supported by male artists. Like we love male artists. I don't want to say that. Mm. No, you know, we're we're like uh, I I work with a lot of men, <laughs> so you know, disclaimer. Um, but I wanted to like basically, it's hard to be a mom, right? It's hard to be a mother. Um, and as an extension of that, I have had experiences where I feel like it's been harder for me as a woman in the music industry, especially, well, maybe in the whole music industry, but for me, I've been in like the electronic music industry, mm. uh, and festivals. Very male dominated. Yes. Very male dominated. So I've had so many experiences where I'm like, oh, okay. There's my homie that I've known for years. And he like just started his project, but he's already like way ahead of me in booking and all these things. And I'm just like, mm, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't feel very supportive um, as an artist. And I, I see, you know, this industry and there's all these things that are very algorithmic focused and kind of not very like artist focused. And I feel like what was needed or at least like for for women and like specifically for mothers who we have to slow down when we have a kid. We have no choice. We have to, and I feel like in my history, I've always been afraid of having a child because I have been so driven to be successful in my craft and in my art that I was like, 
how the hell can I do both? Because in this world, I have to stay hardcore and hustle, hustle, hustle if I want to be successful. And I came to a point in my life where I, I realized that I, I did want both. Like, I really do want a family and I want a successful music career. Like, is that is that a crime, right? Is that so hard to have both? And so I realized that I was just going to have to figure out how to do it my own way because a, I'm not Beyonce or Alicia Keys who who's already successful by the time they decide to have a child. And, you know, B, I don't really see any anyone else out there doing it in the way that, you know, that I envision like a mid range artist who's doing it and doing it well, but and also like a mother and how are they navigating that? So there's just so many questions that I've had about how I could do that. And so it was just an answer to my own question of like, okay, well, let me create a community, um, a network, a space, a, a label for to really like understand um, mothers from a deep level of like, it's okay if you take two years actually to like produce and release your single, we st we've still got you. And like, we've got you along the whole process of all the decision-making, because I know that that's a whole part of it. Obviously the, the figuring it out and the album art and the, what do I do? How, like, how do I release it and when, and what do I do to follow up? All of these questions are part of the release process that for me with the labels that I've signed to pretty much all they do is throw you on a few Spotify playlists and call it a day. And then they take 50% of your um, master or the entire master in one case. And so, yeah, so yeah, exactly. So like, the, I, I, I feel like it's a wild, wild west of the music industry and some labels are, yeah, just really doing it in, in like a selfish way. <laughs> um, you know, they're, they're self-serving or something. And I feel, yeah, again, just like not supported by the labels I've signed with. So I wanted to allow women and mothers because it's like, it's already hard, right? So I wanted to have a, a support network for them that actually felt like deeply, deeply um, empowering. Mm. So on a, on a practical level, what, you know, you mentioned earlier about, you know, you, you've been on other labels and, 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 and like you just mentioned as well, someone taking hundred percent, which is shocking. And, um, and yeah, just chucking you on a few, a few Spotify playlists. What are you, and you've touched on it a little bit there as well about like giving some time, but like specifically what practical things are you doing? That's, that's going to, you know, that's going to be different or that you're doing that's different at moon babe with respect to the mamas. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I think that the percentage breakdown needs to be way more fair than what I've experienced. Like I said, I've, I've signed a lot of 50, 50 deals with labels and that's gotten me in trouble because of a lot of things, but like basically the breakdown of royalties outside of that has um, like with my producer and co-writer has led it to where I only get like a half of, I don't know how to explain it mathematically in this moment, but like I signed a three-way deal with my co-producers and then I was the only one who signed the 50-50 deal with the label. So then I'm the tiniest percentage. Uh, so you got 50, so for every dollar you got 50 cents and then of your 50 cents, you then yes. had to split that up. And so suddenly yeah. you end up with like 16.66 recurring exactly. scene. Thank you. And for it's like, hang on, this is this. I didn't, I'm not even, even signed to a major, even major record labels are like yes. on 18%. Exactly. Yeah, so, right. So that's fishy for me. And, and that's been very heartbreaking. <laughs> um, and so, you know, just the percentage split, first of all, like we give the artist 80%. Um, and we take 20%. And so just even in, in that like percentage breakdown, I want the artists to feel like they have like a big right. Um, and they own their masters. It's, it's only like a three year deal versus I've signed my songs away for 10 years or lifetime, um, to the, to these other indie labels that I've experienced. And so on that practical level, you know, that's there. And then on a more like this part is, is growing and shifting, but 
basically offering deeper label services. And like, I like to look at it as midwifing the music into the world, um, <laughs> very motherhood based. So again, having like that one-on-one -on -one, it's, it's similar to coaching, right. To, cause I also do mentorship and that's, that's how, you know, I support myself to, to do this label project is with, uh, with mind, body music. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Right. Mind, body, music, the mentorship business. So these things are, are similar. So I'm teaching about these things, right? I'm teaching about how to do a DIY release and an independent release and all the things you need. And again, yeah, like, you know, um, intro to booking and, um, and like PR and all these things. And so then some of that kind of information and coaching mentorship mm -hmm. gets transferred to the artists who a lot of my our artists are are newer, you mm -hmm. know, to to the game. So they have a lot of questions about, you know, what does this do? How do I how do I get on a blog? Why should I even bother getting on a blog? Um, what sh what should the album art be like? How you know what I mean? All these things. Um, yeah. When so so can we can we dive into this area a little bit more because I find it really interesting because it, like a couple of things. First of all, you know. And it's and it's extremely honorable and it's amazing that you're saying, hey, we're only taking 20% as a label, right? Yeah. But it's, you know, as it's hard to make money for everybody. Like, Probably. so, you know, my first thought is, okay, well then how how are you going to be able to make a profitable business, right? That's going to be really difficult. But then you say, oh, but then I have the mentorship program. I'm helping a lot of people out. And I and I guess, you know, and if you're doing that and someone comes on and I, I imagine, you know, you do a thing where it's like, I will, you know, do a coaching thing for $500 or a thousand or something like that. I guess if that's been taken care of, then the releasing yeah. of the music is you don't need to have so much thing. So is that almost like a, a bigger picture of your, of your, of your business model? Like someone comes in and you're sort of being paid to teach them how to do everything just in case it doesn't pop and they do nothing. Mm -hmm your mm -hmm. kind of time is taken care of. And then if it does do well, like, great, you can help them out and you get a little bit of money, but the most of it goes to them. Is, is that the sort of idea behind it? It It is, yes. Um, and, it, and it looks different with every artist. So it's not like every artist I sign pay, pays me to mm -hmm. release their music. Um, but how it often ends up is either, it's like, the funnel of of who comes to to me either via mind body music or moon babe records is usually going to be a client of mine in to some degree either a production client and then it's like an obvious choice to release it through the label through moon babe records mm -hmm. um, because i have been yeah compensated to to produce their track and then it's a good fit for the label stylistically so so yes right and then but then also um i do try to sign artists that i'm just really excited about their their music and so to some degree the label is um yeah a, a bit of like it's not a huge growth money maker for me at this at this point and and that's something that I'm I'm okay with um, because I feel like our whole philosophy is not just trying to go for that like quick growth. Um, I feel like it's it might take my whole lifetime, no, like ten or twenty years to to maybe fully blossom into what Moon Babe Records is and wants to be. Um, and I'm I'm just trying to stay aligned with the values of it mostly but yes it's an artist by artist basis like they'll take my course or this course or that course or they'll pay me to do their production and then in that way i do feel compensated and so it's like a it's a dynamic that works um no I, yeah i i think it, i think it's absolutely brilliant and i think it's a good model case study to become something that is um you know respected and um acknowledged as as a model you know because i work wow. with a lot of people that are starting up record labels and they're starting out and maybe a lot of the artists they're working with are at the beginning of their career and there is yeah. a lot of time you have to put in right and we've all got bills yeah. to pay yeah. and you know there there is that because i think there is a, a bit of a stigmatism where people have gone oh you know you shouldn't be paying to be on a record label or like you know yeah. so you have to pay money to submit your 
you know, and I think that's wrong. Paying money to like being a and R, I totally get that. Yeah. But there is definitely value, and I think especially on the education side mm-hmm. of of taking an artist and saying, "Look, this I'll, I'll share with you everything how it's done, and and you know I'll get compensated for it." But on the back end, and I think that's what you. I think the way you. I think the way you're doing is really smart. Is you're like, but yeah. you're, if you when you release with me, you're keeping eighty percent. Because I think what would be bad is if you're like, hey, you got to pay me a grand, and I'll tell you how to do everything, and then you'll sign to my label, and I'll take fifty fifty. Wow. You know, I feel that's double dipping. Definitely double dipping. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I I think it's really brilliant, and and you know, it, and it's it it also illustrates. But and, and like I was saying, a lot of the art, you know, a lot of people that I know that are running labels, you know, and I talk about it's not just about you know, it's not just about selling records. What are all the other different spokes of your income that you can build around this? You know, and, and a, a, an easy one that a lot of people do, especially if they're artist leaders, is I will, you know, we'll do mixing and mastering in house and things like that, you know, mm. um, and we'll give you a really good rate. But you know, the, the person who's doing it's compensated for it, so that that's a good way to kind of start. Um, so you know, going back, going back to you as I know you're the founder, and I guess you know you don't say you're you're head of A and R, but I guess you are head of A and R because you ultimately will decide which music. Uh, get signed to the label so like what's uh what's kind of a rundown of your usual activities when you've got your like label manager hat on like day to day what are you kind of doing well it depends on the day <laughs> <laughs> but i'm well, maybe maybe I, do a week then maybe do it like a, a, okay. a day, day in the life of the I, I feel like my biggest job is actually just conversing with people like i know that sounds funny but like with you or i'll have a phone call with a potential artist or i'll have a phone call with my collaborator or an artist who's already on the label who we're planning an event um or with another woman who i'm considering to have help run admin things that we want to plan some an online summit or something like i feel like it's just constantly being propelled by these conversations and just like reiterating what we're about in these micro dynamics that yeah because it's we have to be resourceful right in order to make things move and grow and that's what i'm realizing is like for me this is totally uncharted territory i've been doing my own music stuff for many years but now that i have this bigger platform to kind of take care of and carry forward that's more of a collective like a we, um, I'm, I'm constantly like, okay, just basically, and this is what I've always done for my music too. And what I coach about, but basically just attuning to and listening to, if you will, um, who the energetic matches are going to be that are going to help carry the label forward, whether that's, oh, this live event opportunity, is this the right thing for us to do? Or, um, oh, this this live uh, motherhood in music summit. OK, that's interesting. How can we make that happen? And like, let's talk to this person who might be a specialist in that. So, yeah, does that make sense? Basically, yeah. just you're just describing hustling in some ways. <laughs> exactly. But, but no, do you know what? It's 100 percent. You know, you what you're describing is making strategic decisions. So all the classic strategic decision when we're talking about electronic music is getting somebody, a particular person to do a remix of a track because you yeah. know if they do a remix, it opens up this particular audience and market yeah. and, and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, are, are the music, you know, or should we sign off? Should we sign it? You know, should we sign a single off this guy? Well, the demo scene is like, uh, it's a bit average. It's like, yeah, but he also heads up like the whole Midwest, like booking agency things. And so if we do that, we'll be able to get a hold of gigs on. And, and that's, you know, that's a really important part of running a music business as well as being able to recognize that. So um, you've already got that head for it by the sounds of it, <laughs> moving down that path. You um, know, I'm a Gemini. We, we're like always in communication <laughs> mode. <laughs> so um, I, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about, um, you know, there's, there's a lot to do and it's, and it can be quite resource hungry. So who else is on your team over there as well? And, and yeah, who else are you working with? Mm hmm. So this is an interesting part of the equation, too, because first of all, there's a, a virtual assistant. She's amazing. So she helps do kind of the basic admin stuff, like getting all the lyrics up on Music Match and uh, making sure that's all good. And some stuff like Submit Hub um, blog entries and things like that. But then 
Also, I have a, we're calling her a community outreach manager. Mm -hmm. And she is one of the artists on the label. She's also a mama. She's also a, a student of mine. And so we've done a bit of a, a, a trade because she has a grant writing business. And that's one of the things we're looking into is um, for like bigger funding. There are grants for women in, in business, like profitable business for women and uh, women of color. She She's a black mama and woman. And so sh she's part of the team um, on a volunteer. Well, on a That's trade. A good addition. That's a good addition. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We should exactly. get that grant money in. <laughs> yeah. So the, I'm like, why not? You know, maybe. Yep. And and that is something, you know, that I'm looking towards long term is since this is a, a very mission based label, um, what what does that look like to actually secure some bigger funding to then run our events, hire an actual PR company or something like this for mm -hmm. the artists or hire filmmakers to do amazing music videos for the artists. So basically, yeah, just wanting to connect with those, um, with investors who are looking to invest in the arts. So that's something that, that we're working on. Um, and then we also have a copywriter who um, helps write all of, yeah, the website stuff and, and the emails and basically helps put everything in like a really heartfelt way <laughs> that sometimes my brain is running too quickly to, <laughs> to uh, put down in words. So that's basically it right now. And then we, we just have the community of women who are music artists and that's been really beautiful. And we have like a, you know, a WhatsApp chat where we're always like, okay, here's my release. So everyone can hop on and like, like it and all these things. So that's also part of it is like uplifting each other giving each other those likes and saves and comments and algorithmic support. Um, and then our distributor is worth mentioning there. We are distributing through this. Um, basically it's a, a white label agreement with this re record label called six degrees um, out of San Francisco. So we moved from symphonic to them because they offer like actual human to human contact rather than just like a form that you're submitting um, and a bigger pool. And they have a whole network of music licensing libraries that our music is getting filtered and put into. There's like three different ones. Like I forget the the names, seven C's and then they have one and, um, and they've had good success with that in the past. So, so those guys are, are great. Um, we interface with them a lot and. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's um. I mean, just recently, uh, last month, I started the label machine distribution, and a big part of that was oh. for um. So I and then I've got a I've got a company that does all the um uh like the the, the extra sends it off to Spotify and whatnot. Um, but mm -hmm. the big thing is for us to be able to offer anyone that signs that just they can pick up a phone or send an email and they'll get something. It's not yeah. a form. And I, you know, and I think that's going to keep that's, and that's a big part. That's why people are like, cool, I'll just move over. And people are like moving their catalogs over because they can wow. just, they get that. Yeah. So I, I totally see the value in that. Um, I just wanted to jump back quickly as well for anyone that's listening that, you know, you said you had a virtual assistant as well. So how, like, how does that work? Where did you find them? Like, is this a virtual assistant that's in the Philippines or is this like someone in the U.S.? You know, how, how does that, how did you find them and, and, and whatnot? Well, I know a lot of people do find amazing virtual assistants from the Philippines. So <laughs> shout out, shout out to those people. And the, the people in the Philippines are stoked, right. To be working. Um, but I have, I have a, a American. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, she, I just put a call out on, on the Instagram story one day uh, for moon babes looking for a virtual assistant and she, I have, you know, got some responses and she was just an amazing fit. She's all about the mission, right? Supporting mamas and the women. And so it was just a really, really good fit because she understands on a greater holistic level what we're doing and she's really, really all about it. And so her heart is in the work. And so that is uh, really great. So yeah, I just found her through Instagram. <laughs> she's yeah. amazing. 
Yeah, they're, they're super important. And yeah, I didn't think she was going to be from the Philippines. I think that's <laughs> maybe great if you're a CEO and you need someone to book your air flights. But I think if you need someone yeah. to understand the music industry, it's going to be a little more difficult going down that avenue. Um, so what do you think, um, you know, you, you're, you know, you're about supporting um, uh, females in the uh, music industry or mamas in the music industry. What do you think needs to happen like, well, what what areas do you think are not being supported um, in the music industry in general and that you would like to see changed and, and that you're maybe working on as well? That's a great question. I feel like what comes to mind right now is um, women in headlining slots on main stages <laughs> at festivals. Um, that isn't Beyonce. That isn't Beyonce. Yeah, to, to the degree that I play music festivals, it's more like, anywhere from 500 to 10,000 people festivals kind of mm. size. It's not Coachella, right? I'm, I'm not talking about, I mean, yes, maybe someday, right? More of us, more of us go headline Coachella, of course. Okay. Yeah. So for, so actually, you know what, for clarity, let's say yeah. I'm, I'm specifically talking about like the mid band of the music yeah. industry. So it's the not mid- the people that are amateur starting out. It's not the top 40 people. It's it's pretty much like the 70 to 80% of the music industry. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm talking exactly. about now. Yeah. That's, that's great. Let's definitely clarify because a lot of my friends and I, I would say fall into that category of we've been working hard. We have been working for years and this is what's happening, right? And this is where we're at. And so we, um, you know, specifically other women who I know who are amazing and like have been doing it and like, know the ins and outs um, are still, we are getting slotted at like the side stages or something that either um, it's not quite, it's not like the right sound system. It's like, Oh, we're, I'm an electronic artist, but you're, but there there's like no sub bass or something that happens all the time. Um, Things like that. And, or like a 1 AM slot or like a new 12 PM or something like that. And so, I think part of that, like there, obviously it's a complex conversation. Part of that is like, well, maybe our beats don't hit as hard. I don't know. And so then it's like, okay, then let's learn. Let's teach them how to like make the, the, the beats, the beats and the bass hit and have that high, high time energy. Um, But I also think it's just about, yeah, representation and the value system of the, the booking you know, team and making sure that it's not just about like when they do their lineups and their schedules and specifically for festivals, right? Like it's, I don't know what's going through their mind, but it's probably something like who has the most draw and, um, you know, and maybe even the most Spotify listeners Mm -hmm. these days, that's a big, that is a big big thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so maybe some of us haven't been focusing on releasing every three weeks for two years. You know what I mean? And because you, can't, maybe, you just had a baby. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm So it's all comes, comes down to all of that. And um, yeah. So, and that doesn't mean that we won't slay <laughs> mm. at, at 10 PM Saturday night slot. Like, come on, give us the chance people. You know what I'm saying? Like we'll bring our dancers. We'll bring, we'll bring our babies on stage because we're communal like that. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and so that I, I would say is a big mm. quandary. I, would you, would you say as well that there's, especially in the last three to four years, you know, people are aware like, Hey, we need to make sure that we, um, you know, supporting, um, uh, uh, cultures and people that aren't as represented. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and with and with women as well in film and music and in creatives, like you know, we need to address that balance. But there's maybe some times where someone's like, "Oh, we need to make sure we've got some women on the lineup." Okay, yeah, we'll get their names, but we're just going to chuck them in the side room at like whatever, so we can make sure we've like ticking that box. Exactly. And it's like, if you're going to do it, do it properly. Don't yeah. just do it to fill a quota. I I personally feel there's a little bit of quota filling at the moment. What's mm-hmm. your thoughts on that? I just want to clap you for saying that (laughs) because I I agree yeah I think that that's definitely happening and so and and we are at least there's awareness right and we're going in that direction but like you said we have we still have 
yeah, a long ways to go um, in terms of realizing how to do it, you know, um, how to do it with authenticity and in a way that actually makes those less represented artists feel like they are getting the full support and honoring that they that they deserve and that they want to feel you know mm. so yeah so um you know if, if i'm a you know i'm a young um person <laughs> who, ident who identifies as female and i'm listening um what what would you what would you say uh some of the rookie mistakes or common problems that you've seen over and over um that new or early career uh mama artists make mm -hmm. okay this is great so they don't give enough time and space to the build up to the to the release um there's a lot of excitement that goes into the music making and then when they're actually f done with the song they're like Phew, oh my god i actually completed it like boom i just want to put it out there and there's not nearly enough time or thought or strategy put into okay let's lengthen this let's tease it out and let's use this release process as an audience building process from the get-go let's tell our story in little pieces as we build up for two months even right and build our content and slowly leak our, our new content, our new photos or whatever out that are telling our story and inviting people in and like using hashtags and all that algorithmic juju, like as a strategic um, momentum builder for the release. And then after the release also being like, oh, well, I'm done. And now I'm moving on to other things. It's like, no, I'm sorry, baby. But like in the indie world, I love someone said this once. It's like it's like growth farming. You're like it, you don't just plop it out and then you're done. It's like you have to go back and and like till the soil that you already planted the seeds in in order for them to grow. So like, right, reposting and oh, there's so many things you can do and get creative and with mm -hmm. your release. So it's really the entire like wave of the release. I think um, newbies just don't look at it as as big of an opportunity as it is to grow their careers and like build momentum around even just that one single or something. Do you so, think that's though, because that's traditionally what the record label does? The, what do well, mean? I mean, and when I say record label, I mean a well-funded record label mm -hmm. with a big staff, not like a small indie who's just putting up on a couple of Spotify playlists, you know, traditionally is that, yeah. that, you know, that you would sign to the label and then the label has their marketing team and go, right, what's the story? We're going to do this. We're going to do a music video that yeah. shows you that side of your yeah. branding and all that kind yeah. of stuff. And so if you are going to release your own music or, or you know, yeah, release it on your own label or with an indie label, you still need to address those areas. Those mm -hmm. things still need to be done is what you're sort of yeah. saying. I think so. I think that people probably feel like they don't have access to yeah, to all those things maybe, or they don't even know where to start or what to focus on in their story building, in their A&R process is really kind of what it is. Like you're, you're putting your finger on the pulse. And so, yeah, just being that voice for them of, well, this is what you can do. This is what you can do fully DIY. This is how you could do it for $0 because that's also a thing. People like run out of budget if they have paid a producer or a mixing and mastering person, or maybe they have made one music video, but then they don't even know what to do with it or like how to break that down into like bite-sized chunks to then tease out the release. They just put the music video on YouTube and then call it a day or um, whatever it is. I think that, yeah, people don't feel like they, they have what they need in order to, to do all of that. So yeah, it's, it's an important piece though. <laughs> and is there um you know are there are there anything else that you've seen that they make mistakes or is there anything that you see hold, are holding back any mama artists let's see well i'm like support from their husbands i don't know <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's very assum assumptive i don't know but um i i think probably though yeah like the honestly the support at home to like, well, how, how do we, when do we have time, right, to even, 
focus on our music. I do think that that's a, a piece of it for, for women um, who are mamas, for me, for my clients who are also mamas and just um, like creating the space in our day-to-day -day life. So on that point, you know, you're a mother of a nine and a half year old daughter and, and, yep. I, and you've got a husband, I think I've seen from the Instagram pictures. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. how do you, so how do you, you know, you're, you're an accomplished artist, you're releasing music. Yeah. How, <laughs> what, like, how do you approach that to make sure you've got time for the studio and producing? How, how do you approach it? I have to get way more organized than I ever was before. And I have to dial it. I have to do my to-do lists and dial it down to the hour free that I can grab. Um, and, and, and I have to get way more patient around when that happens, because for example, right now I have to record vocals for like three songs that I've been wanting to do for a, a week at least. Um, but it has to, I have so many other things that I have to do. It has to uh, line up with the one day a week that we have nanny support. We do, we have a nanny one day a week, which is great. That's, um, you know, it is expensive. Childcare is expensive. And so uh, that's going to be my, my moment, even though I also have clients to build in. It's like a puzzle piece, right? Mm -hmm. um, of the schedule. And I also have to say that I'm particularly lucky because we live uh, five hours away from my mama. And so we go up to her house and we will stay. She actually built us a cottage in her backyard. So, oh, wow. yeah. So we will stay there for a week or a, two weeks, even at a time. And then definitely rinse that. <laughs> exactly. And we have her. Every moment you can get up there. We're up. See you soon, mom. I know. I know. <laughs> Seriously. It's, it's been a huge blessing and not something that, maybe some people like have access to um, maybe, you know, some mamas live far away from their, their families, but mm. that, that family support is very, has been very empowering for me because of course I want my baby to spend time with her, her grandma and I could just hand her off. And then I'm like, wow, I'm way more freed up now. <laughs> so, um, so all of that. And then I think also just the philosophy of, well, I'm just going to do this anyway, no matter what. And sometimes my baby is in my Zoom calls and sometimes she comes on and says, you know, hello. And it's just, I, I don't like give myself <clears throat> the the memo that, oh, it's, it's too much or I can't ever. I'm just like, well, I'm just going to do it. And even with gigs, especially like I'll play two hour DJ sets and it's like, well, what, what then? Because <laughs> she's breastfeeding and nursing. And, and so I will often end up having her on stage with me and like DJing with one hand and nursing with one hand. And that's something that it's almost like gimmicky at this point, because people are like, Oh my God, they pull out their phones. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not trying to like, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm not trying to do it, but can you smile? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's all of it. And I think pink, pink actually said it well, cause she's, you know, a mom who's, who's mm. famous, who has her kids and she made a whole documentary about bringing her kids on tour. And I, I love that. Right. She's like, I'm, I'm not someone who like closes the door and then walks away into my career. I have my whole life in one room, like my family life, my career life, like the doors are open. And I just think that it's a mindset thing uh, when it comes down to it, how you're going to make it work. So. Mm. I, and, you know, I'm seeing that being more accepted, not, you know, in all creative industries, not just music and film. Um, and I think, I think, you know, the whole COVID pandemic thing maybe helped out with that yeah. with Zooms, people being used to seeing these kids and people's yeah. work lives and actually like, yeah. yes. it's not the end of the world, like whatever, yeah. like we've all got families yeah. and that's yeah. fine. And sure, like they might come and behind but you just get rid of them and then you get you know you get on with what's going on and exactly. i think that's been really yeah beneficial for everybody to kind of have that um yeah which has been awesome so i kind of want to i kind of want to jump on to um sort of some more i guess sort of like more labelly business kind of questions as well so um you've got a um oh, so you know you well, I, I guess first of all where I, I I almost know the answer every time I ask this now. It used to be a little bit more dynamic um, a few years ago, but not so much these days. But 
where would you find most of your royalties are coming from for the label these days across like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, and Tidal? Like, what would you say? Definitely Spotify. Um, yeah. yeah. There's some that come from Apple Music and then surprisingly also um, some from SoundCloud. Which, really? Yeah. I'm not quite sure how that, how that factors in, but it's pretty cool that that still has some, some clout. Um, I'm looking for That's interesting. The, the reason I, so I was on, I logged into an old SoundCloud account yesterday because oh, I needed to have a, I need to go, go into a management account to upload something. But anyway, then I, and I was listening to, um, a, a, a playlist on SoundCloud and then, and it was listening fine. And then suddenly I heard this ad and I was like, what, why am I hearing an ad? And then I looked yeah. down and it said, you know, I was playing an ad for, and it was actually playing an ad for a new hospital that's opening in London. Oh. I was like, I know it's a bit weird, but I actually know one of the guys who was working on the opening of the hospital. I was like, this is really weird. But anyway, <laughs> um, but then I realized, ah, oh, they must be, they now are monetizing their music because my, when I was listening to my, when I, my normal account is a pro account, which is paid for. So I, I guess I don't hear ads. And the, the other one, the one that I signed up yesterday was like a free account. Um, so they must be, and I know they've been talking about it for a while. So that must be, they must be having the ad revenue that's coming through. Um, and because I, I'm, I'm definitely still use SoundCloud because why did I jump on there? There was, um, music that just wasn't available yeah. on Spotify. I mean, yes. I just heard yesterday uh, Snoop Dogg took down like half his music off Spotify. I heard that um, too. Yeah, because, uh, and they're, they're, you know, they're trying to sort out, like they're doing some sort of a deal or something like that. But, you know, I think that's going to be happening more and more. And so, you know, yeah, maybe mm. we're going to see more of that SoundCloud on there. Yeah, that's exciting. That's kind of exciting just because, yeah, it's, it's still more open sourced, you know, the, the platform you can put remix that you can put bootleg remixes up there. I think that's also a lot of why there's still a lot of high traffic there because for DJs, it's like, you can't, you definitely can't get certain things on Spotify or Apple music that you could find on SoundCloud or something like Bandcamp and Bandcamp is worth mentioning too, because, uh, well, I, I did want to ask about Bandcamp because I know you've got you've got there. How, are you getting a, a like a sizable income from there, or and and or are you also taking um, you know using the opportunity when they do the Bandcamp Fridays as well? I do try to use the Bandcamp Friday opportunity. We're not getting a huge income at this point yet, probably just because we've been pushing more of Spotify, honestly, because it's it's tricky. It's it's almost like you have to be in resistance to Spotify in order to like push Bandcamp forward, even though I do agree more with their model of paying artists directly. Um, I think they're amazing. So I would like to to be promoting and growing the Bandcamp audience more. Um, that's something we, that we'll probably do. Yeah, we're finding what works is releasing on Bandcamp two weeks before releasing oh, everywhere else. So you just good. go... Band, 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 band camp exclusive. People go awesome. Come and support the artist early. Most of the money goes to the artist and the label. It's not shared with all those guys. People go awesome, and then two weeks later, you go, hey, now it's on Spotify. If you know, if if you, if you just listen to Spotify, that's fine. It's now available. That seems to be quite a, a sort of Rated, yeah. yeah, yeah, a good way to work it. I have to say, good SoundCloud quickly as well. I think the rise of EDM in the last ten years helped them. If EDM yeah. hadn't happened, it would have been more of a struggle because, yeah, I think it is a big electronic community there. Oh, yeah. um, so do you, uh, so, um, you know, talking about Spotify as well, how, um, you know, well, I'm going to say how important do you think a Spotify playlist? I think it's pretty obvious getting on Spotify yep. playlists are uh, <laughs> important these days. What are you, Every have you got any particular strategies or tips and tricks that you find works with, with getting your music on playlists or any particular sites you use or. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, along with the community building model, I actually often tell artists if they have the time to go into their Spotify for artists app, see what playlists they've already been placed on. Um, see which of those are the user playlists, see, you know, the most streams and then go look at that 
user on Spotify and often their name will match their handle on Instagram or something. And so then go to Instagram and actually reach out and say, Hey, thank you so much. I'm so glad you enjoyed this song. I have this new song that you might want to put on your playlist as well. So it's a little bit of like that personal reach out. And I have done a bit of that before it is time consuming, but that is something that like an admin could also could also do potentially because, um, if you get enough of those user playlists, like, yeah, sometimes the Spotify editorial playlists are you and, and algorithmic. You so, you know, you don't know how to get onto those specifically. And I've definitely, I've tried, but sometimes it just happens from the amount of user based playlists that you are on. Right. So mm. doing that. And then also I, I have used sites like Groover, Submit Hub, and then also this other one. What's it called? Uh, Muso Soup. They're all blog, um, blog based services like PR essentially. But a lot of the, a lot of the blogs will also have a Spotify playlist. So that's also a way to do it. And it, it costs a little bit of money to submit your song, but not a lot. So you can definitely do it with like very low budget. So Groove has been on my, um, uh, on my radar. It's on a, like, I've got like a list of like sites to review and, you know, do a thing for the community, which I haven't got round to. So I'd be interested to hear like how, like, and, and also I guess for the listeners as well, like, what is Groover and, and then, you know, what experience did you have with them and what kind of results did you get? So I've used Groover a few times. It's mostly like European based blogs and maybe some labels on there even um, and curators. It kind of gives you an option who you want to connect with. Um, and so it's, it works similarly to Submit Hub for those who, who know Submit Hub. I'm not sure which one's bigger. I think Submit Hub's probably, probably more widespread. But Groover, I've had, I have, I've had good success with getting feedback. I've had like okay success with sharing. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure. It's, it's a little bit more expensive than Submit Hub too. So I'm not quite sure how I would much I would recommend it. Honestly, the one I've had the most success with is called Muso Soup. And they Muso are it like mu- Muso or Miso? Muso. <laughs> like Muso, M-U-S-O soup. And you have to set a budget of I think 35 euros to kind of launch the thing, launch the single, but then you get like a ton of responses. They have, I think, a pretty good working community on there of of blogs. And I've gotten like where, you know, with Groover or Submit Hub, I'll get like a lot of feedback, but like, okay, feedback and maybe one blog or something. Mm. Um, with with Musa Soup, I will have multiple blogs to choose from every time that I'm like, oh, this is where we'll do our our blog premiere. Mm, so, interesting. Do you yeah. think, you know, from your experience, are some of these platforms almost a bit like, different types of distributors or labels in which you know they almost their community lean towards particular styles of music mm-hmm. i think so i do think so yes yes like, yes you yes. know it's yeah more groover is more rock and pop or indie and yeah i, I mean mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i do i do hear submit hub is sort of edm housey more that kind of cheesy poppy house stuff seems to do well on there. I think so. Yeah. The cheesy poppy house. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, not that it's even pop music by what real pop music is, but you, yeah, you know what I mean? And yeah. so, and so would you say that kind of more musical and melodic, um, uh, like electronic music and music seems to do well on Muso Soup? I would say so. Yeah. Like indie Tronica or alt pop Tronica or, you know, some of these things. Yeah. More, more moody, maybe. Um, more moody. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. That's a good tip to know. I'll, I'll definitely be sharing that. Um, all right. I'm just keeping an eye on the time as well. Cause I do like to keep this to 60 minutes. Um, do you do any kind of merchandise or are you planning to do any kind of merchandise? For now, just stickers. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, we if we secure some bigger funding, maybe we'll do a big T-shirt run 
but that's not at the top of our priority list at the moment, even though it's such a fun idea and I, I love it, but yeah, yeah. maybe a, a little bit down the road. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, and I, you know, I didn't realize that, you know, you've, you've really been going for a year as well. I think merch really kicks in maybe in the second year. Mm -hmm. um, do you do any paid advertising um, like, you know, run Facebook or Instagram ads or any of that stuff? And what have you been finding? No, yes, yes, no. No, not a, not at this point. No, I, I've tried Facebook ads a lot in the past for my own music and I've, I've just never felt like it's super worth it. Um, so we haven't done that so far, although this guy, um, you know, do you know, John of hype at it, hyped it. Oh yeah. He, I know John. Yep. Yeah. 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 So he has the, his whole kind of program on how to do it. So that's something I'm like, maybe we'll, maybe we'll try that, but at some point, but so far, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say, because I've done it loads and I do it also just for the label machine as well. Um, I think what people need to remember is it's not like you go in and you go, oh, I'll put $200 down and then I expect to get these results and it just hit when it, and you know, I just do it in two weeks and that's it as, you know, like right. you put money in and you get a result out the back. It's definitely a long, a longer term, like I'm going to do this for the next year and we're going to slowly build up our audience. And that does mm -hmm. seem to be the kind of the way you know, you do have to approach it. Um, but yeah, jo John's course is, is super awesome as well. And yeah. um, sync deals. Have you have you managed to sync? Hello. Speaking of. What's your Naya, name? This is Naya Rose. Hey, Naya Rose. How are you? Hello. 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 Yeah. I wonder if you can see. Uh, yeah. There's my there's Jago. Hi, Jago. So cute. <laughs> All right, we're on. We're almost done. So, mommy, we'll see you in a couple minutes. Mwah. <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just for, um, I I know you were you said you moved over distributors to do some sync stuff. Like, have you synced anything yourself yet? Um, not not yet with Moonbay Records. I feel like that does take a little bit of time to be in the in the stew, you know. So I'm yeah, I'm I'm hoping. I'm I'm ex excited for the longer we stay and the kind of the more we get to know and the more their listeners get to know us, what what can happen. Mm -hmm. Um I have had, you know, a few sync places myself though, namely one was um kind of the best case scenario, although I messed up on the, on the, uh, the split, but that's okay. But it was like a $20,000 thing wow. for, yeah. South Korean like cell phone ad or something. And they had, it was a really like pretty music video kind of ad. Wow. <laughs> so we're like, thank you. <laughs> you know? So and was that, was that a 20 K all in for, was that like 10 K masters, 10 K publishing? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, they're amazing when you do get them. Um, oh, it's so good. <laughs> just relax yeah. for a few months. <laughs> like, thank you. Can we just keep that going? <laughs> yeah, it is, I, I do know, though, it's a, um, for people, I've got a couple of friends who do it, and it's it's full time for them, like, yes. you know, oh, hustling and oh. submitting and changing stuff. Um, so that's awesome. You've got it. All right. So um, we're going to kind of wrap this up. Um, what is the um, future? for moon babe records like what are you what's your plans for the next year or two or, and what are you hoping to achieve the plans for the next year or two are probably slowing down the amount of releases now that we have a year under our belts and just going more for full albums um and maybe some some remix albums so yeah um continuing the growth but doing bigger releases i would say than more constant releases and then also doing a couple of live community building events around the label because that's been really fun <laughs> oh that's awesome um and, uh, where are you based by the way i'm in uh la area so in la area and so if you do so if i'm i'm i mean i come into la quite a bit so yeah I just oh keep, my keep my eye on the on the next time you guys are doing shows and yeah. hopefully we can cross paths yeah absolutely our next big one for sure um, we call it Moon Babes in the Garden. It's going to be in Malibu on spring equinox. So March 21st. I know that's a ways away, but you could put that in your calendar if you want. And that's going to be our next big event. Um, yeah. I mean, that's around, um, 
what's it called? The Miami show that they do. My wife. Art, Art Basel? No. Is Art Basel? I'm sure there's a big thing in Miami at the time. Awesome. So um, where can we find you if, I'm, if we want to follow you on Instagram or online? What's the yeah. website? What's your Instagram handles for both you and the label? Mm -hmm. So Moon Bay Records is just Moon Bay Records on Instagram at Moon Bay Records. You can click our link tree and subscribe to our mailing list if you want. And also check out our website, which has more full information. And then um, mine is Heather Christie Music with with a C H I E. So C H R I S T I E. And the handle is at Heather dot Christie dot music. So on Instagram, and then again, through my link tree on there, you can find my website and all the other, all the other things. And you can also follow me on Spotify as well as Moon Babe Records um, as a user. And there's a big Moon Babes playlist with a ton of beautiful female artists that are both our artists and then also inspirational artists that we that we love so yeah <laughs> awesome yeah and and for anyone who's listening if you want to hear the music straight away and you do happen to have an amazon alexa just say to amazon please hit play heather christine you'll hear her music straight away which is amazing amazing, amazing. <laughs> um thank you so much for your time um yeah it was awesome hearing your story and what you're doing um i think you know, you're one of the few people that are, um, you know, doing music and doing music business for the right reasons. It's not just about money. It's, you know, about helping artists and empowering them as well. So, yeah, it was a real honor. Thank you so much, Nick. So good to chat with you, too. Thank you so much for having me. 